interrupt our teaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit this morning. It is Resurrection Day. Um, you won't find me usually. You usually won't find me saying uh, anything about Easter. Um, I don't get uptight if people do. They're so used to doing it. But we like we like to talk about the Resurrection Day versus the um, versus Easter because Easter is it was added in the King James. You go ahead. Children's Church dismissed. Preschool dismissed. Easter came from the name of the Greek goddess Ishtar which was at the, by the time that they translated the King James Bible, uh, because the, um, the Gaelics and so forth who, who worshiped on that holiday, the, 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 um, when they translated the Bible and they talked about Passover, they just put Ishtar, put Ishtar in there, Easter. And, and the Greek word is Paschal or, or, or for Passover. It, it, if you go study it, the Greek word that they translate Easter is not Easter at all. They just did it because they, it, it, it delineated a certain date that they were all familiar with. Amen? So if you go back pre-King James, that, that, that word was not, it was not Easter, it was Passover. So if you, when you see the word Easter, which is only one time in the Bible, uh, and we, we've just gotten used to it. But uh, this is where all the, you know, a lot of, lot, you know, we, we talk about the life, of Greek, Ishtar was a Greek goddess of fertility. Well, you can't get any more fertile than a bunny rabbit. <laughs> Hello, this is why bunny rabbits are associated with it so much. Because, I mean, you, you get one rabbit and you leave them alone for a couple weeks, you, you're, you might have 55 rabbits out there when you come back. They do multiply. They, 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 they really get, there must have been bunny rabbits standing right under the Lord when he said, be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, I mean, you know, the, the eggs and so forth, uh, you know, we, we do, when you go on the other side, that, it all represents life and so forth, in which the, the church does. But, and, and of course, you know, Passover was here before Ishtar was, so we're, we're not a tight. I just, I'm just saying, I like talking about Resurrection Day. This is the day we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. So, uh, glory to God. Let's open our Bibles, if you will, to the 21st chapter, um, or 20th chapter. I'm sorry, of the book of John. Now we know um, three days prior to this, Jesus has been crucified, laid into the tomb, of, uh, and, and a seal put on it. Pilate had put a, had put a um, guards over the tomb to make sure nobody messed with it. The disciples had watched Jesus die. Peter had denied him three times. They were just, you know, this, this, was the, this was their answer. This was the man that was going to restore the kingdom. And even, even the disciples didn't get it because they said, Lord, this, without this time, restore thy kingdom. And it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. They were still looking for a natural kingdom. They still didn't understand. Even after all the teaching of Jesus, after all the things that he said, all the things that he did, they did not get it. They were still thinking of a natural kingdom. And then they watched Jesus die. Yeah. They watched his blood, and they watched him pierce the side, and the blood and water come out. It really wasn't blood and water. It was the red corpuscles and the white corpuscles that separated into the heart sack around the heart. Y'all do know this, that around the heart there's a sack. Some people refer to it as the heart sack, it is a, and, and it's around the heart. And Jesus' heart had burst, and the blood had run into it, and then the corpuscles over the time had separated into a clear blood serum and a, and, a, and a red blood serum. And so when they pierced his side, they punctured that. And then the red and the white flowed out. And they said, so the blood and the water flowed out. But it was really, it was the, the separation of the blood. And, and, and then that just ran out because he had died of a broken heart. His heart had broke and burst. And that blood had, and from his body that was, had flow, flowed into that heart sac. And then in that place, it separated. You ever, have you ever, now listen, a number of years ago, we, our neighbor passed away. And we went over because Rescue Squad was there to, to help. And he'd been there for some time. And his body was, his, his, the back side of his body was red. The top side of his body was white. It was really, it was really weird looking. I mean, and he, had been, he had been dead for hours. The wife came home and found him in the floor. And um, so, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that the body does some different things. But, you know, when they came to break the legs of them, Jesus was already dead. So they pierced his side just to make sure. But, you know, that fulfilled the prophecy that not a bone will be broken. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. They looked on him whom they pierced. Hallelujah. His, hail, his hands, 1,500 years before crucifixion, 22nd Psalm. The disciples had seen all this. John was there with Jesus' mother when he said, Behold thy son and behold thy mother. In other words, take care of her. Amen. They had seen him put in the sepulcher. And they went and they, you know, I don't know if, I don't know if they were in hiding as much as they were in grief. They were just all gathered together. Can you imagine 
I mean, you know, all, all hope gone. Yeah. Everything you had pinned your dreams on, gone. And I want to say, you know, there's a lot of humanity today that's living, maybe not in the hopes that Jesus was their, their hope, but they had a lot of hopes have been dashed. <clears throat> the past three or four years of our economy has been so devastating that, that people have lost homes. Mm -hmm. the high, we're at the, probably the highest repossession. Um, um, what's the other word? What's the other word? Um, default, default and foreclosure rate we've ever had in this country. Gasoline is the highest it's ever been at this time of the year. I rode by one station this morning on High Point Road, $3.99.9. I thought, I'm going to go ahead and put exactly one gallon in and see if they'll, what they're going to do when I walk in there because I'm going to pay three ninety nine nine. dollars I want my tenth of a penny back. You know? <laughs> It's going to roll over to $4, I can guarantee you that. You know, well, I'm sorry, I bought my tenth back. You know, you're lying, false advertiser, sue them or something. <laughs> There's a lot of hope loss in humanity. The last election, we, the, 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 people, the majority of the people in this country voted and voted for hope and change. Well, we got some change, I don't know, about, and a lot of people lost their hope. All ran, you know, I saw the latest one, Obama for America. I'm, I'm thinking, you know, listen, we, 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 people voted for, for, for hope and change last time. We got change. But a lot of hope's been lost. People have lost their homes. They've lost their jobs. We have a true unemployment rate of over 14% in this country. In the natural, it's still a dismal picture. I don't know if you bought, how many have been in the grocery store lately? Yeah. I mean, everything has gone way up. Everything. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to keep, you know, people can lose hope. You know, the reason that the, un, the true unemployment and the unemployment figures the government gives are different is because the difference is the people who gave up and quit looking and stopped drawing unemployment. They're out there and they're unemployed. They're just not on the record book because they're not drawing unemployment paychecks anymore. They've either, expect, they've either gone past the 99 months Folks, that is four weeks short, five weeks short of two years of government unemployment benefits. And we have 5% of the 14% of all the unemployed who've given up and aren't drawing anything. Government figure, oh, it's down to eight point whatever. No, no, the real figures are, are, are 14 to 15%. True unemployment in this country. That's not good. Oh. People have lost hope. There's, there's a hopelessness about them. And I can imagine how the disciples were sitting in, 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 in the place where they were sitting and, and just talking about, well, you know, and Peter sitting over in the corner just weeping and crying about what he had done and about the shame he had about what he had done in denying the Lord three times. And, uh, and the disciples thinking about Judas who betrayed him and how could we have ever had him in our midst and not known that. And all those who had walked with him those, during that time sitting in that place, sitting together thinking of, you know, uh, that our hope is gone. We, we thought we had the answer. And you know, we, we thought we had the, 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 the liberty. We believed in him. We watched him walk on water. We watched him perform miracles. We saw all these things, but yet we just watched him die on the cross. I'm telling you, people look at circumstances around them and they can lose hope. They look at the circumstances of life about them and they can begin to rec recount all the things that, have, that they thought were going to happen that didn't happen, that have gone wrong, that it looks like everything has gone down the tubes, that there is no way out, that everything is just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and you just hope that, you, and you, you hope that there is some hope left. Are you here? Amen. And humanity lives in that place. They look for, they look for answers. In drugs and sex and perversion, our, our school systems are being inundated with homosexual agendas where your kids are being taught that homosexuality is normal, that lesbianism is normal, that uh, bisexuality and transgender is normal. Parents are having their kids have sex operation changes at 12, 10, and 12 years old because, you know, they're a woman locked up in a man's body or a man locked up in a woman's body. They're having gender reassignment surgery. First of all, the doctor that does it is a pervert. And the parents that led them to perverts. It's devils. People have lost hope. They've lost vision. They see no need for, norm, for living life. Their hope has been robbed from them throughout all the earth. There are wars and rumors of wars. <clears throat> we go along for time and all, all of a sudden there's a tsunami that wipes out 100,000 people. There are earthquakes that wipe out villages. 
There are government issues going on where secrets and backroom deals are being made and call on open mics. When I get reelected, we will have more freedom to, to sell out America to Russia. One administration gave all of our missile secrets to the Chinese. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody's phone laughing at me. <laughs> Sound like it was laughing at me. <laughs> all right. They're turning to New Age. They're turning to false pseudo gospels. They're being, you know, and, and the hope has been, has been, you know, Satan is out to rob hope from humanity. And I can imagine that these disciples are sitting in that room with all hope lost and all hope gone. And everything that they believed in and trusted in sucked out of them like you, like you popped the balloon and all the air escaped and it deflated like this. And the first day of the week come with Mary Magdalene early while it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and seeing the stone taken away from the sepulcher. And she didn't even stop to go in. She just turned around and ran. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. How many know who that is? John. All right. Now you can, you, can you imagine the conflict that goes on here? I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. Yeah. Peter said, I cut somebody's ear off for him. I mean, you could have had, had squabbling going on right there in the, in, in the whole, all this time. I mean, Peter, Peter was not exactly your most polished guy. Right. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, Peter said, I'll die for you. Cut some guy's ear off, and then three minutes or, or three hours later, he's cussing and denying him three times. I don't know the blankety blank, 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 blank. Hello? Then he goes out and weeps and cries. And Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. They ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter. And John's talk, talking in kind of like third person here, but it's him. And coming to the, to the sepulcher and stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet he went not in. John didn't go in. Then come a sign with Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and see if the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple who came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as, listen, for as yet they, they knew not the scripture that he must rise from the dead. But then the disciples went away into their own home. Now, when they got there, remember the Jews had learned the Egyptian form of mummification. From being in Egypt for 400 years, they had learned to bury the dead in mummification. So they had mummified Jesus. They had wrapped him in the, 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 uh, the cloth um, in, in, the, in the preparation and, and so forth. And so basically when they got there, there was, a, there was an empty mummy. Now the, the Jews left the face uncovered because they believed the spirit of man left through the, through the mouth. And so they just laid a napkin over that so his spirit could get out. That's what they believed. And so when they get there, the napkin was folded up somewhere else and, the, and there was an empty cocoon there. Well, that, that'll starch, that'll put some starch in your underwear. <laughs> Amen? Or that'll take the sugar off your sugar frosted flakes or something like that. Hallelujah. Amen? Yeah. They get there and there's a cocoon and a napkin sold it up over here and he ain't in there. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Supernatural. He was raised from the dead. And they believed. <clears throat> but they didn't notice. And, but Mary stood without the sepulcher, weeping as she wept. She stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and saw two angels. And white sitting, one at the head and one other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. They, and they saw her, woman, while weepest thou? She said, because they've taken my Lord, and I know not where they laid him. See, they, they, see I'm going to tell you, humanity loves martyrs. The Mormon church is built on a, quote, martyr. Hello? There is speculation that Martin Luther King was assassinated by someone other than who, was, who claimed to assassinate him because they wanted a martyr. That people are always looking for martyrs. And, and listen, people will kill people to have a martyr so they can build off of that because for, for other reasons than what that person was really living for. 
There, now that's just speculation. I don't know that's true about Martin Luther King, but there's, specu there's been speculation sometime that he was assassinated by, by people um, in that movement who really had other reasons and other, other purposes and needed a martyr. And so he was assassinated to make him a martyr. Now, all things will be revealed eventually. <laughs> we'll find out when we get to heaven. We'll know for sure. There won't be any speculation. Are you here? Yeah. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, she's, she's there. They will keep the body. They want the body. You're going to worship the body. He ain't there. You know, the martyrs can't do anything for you. Are you here? Whether it's Jesus as a martyr or anybody as a martyr, you, they can't do anything for you as a martyr. And when she said thus, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not it was him. He said, Woman, woman why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if you've borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself back and said unto him, Aboni, which is to say, Master. And he said unto her, Now the King James says, Touch me not. The Greek says, Clutch me not. Don't, don't, don't hold on to me. Some people say he can't touch her because he had, no, no, it wasn't that she was, uh, the, she was going to be unclean. He, he, she said, clutch me not, Greek says. For I have not yet ascended to my father, but go tell my brother and say to them, I ascend unto my father and your father to my God and your God. What was that? He hadn't finished his work. She called him on the way up. <laughs> she just happened to catch him on the way up. He picked up his body, he was on his way up, and he's going to go take his blood to the heavenly holies of holies, and she laid on, grabbed a hold of him. And he said, clutch me not. Not don't touch me. Yeah. Let, I've got to finish my work. I've got to ascend to my father, your father, to my God and your God. I've got to go take my blood into the heavenly holies of holies. There's a work to be done. Amen. There's more to be done. Mm. It's not quite finished yet. There's a work to be complete. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Now, can you imagine? How, can you imagine? Now, they had, now, listen. Peter and John had not seen Jesus, but they believed. Hope was rekindled. I said hope was rekindled. In the day we're living in, we've got to stop giving out some stupid garbage mess to people and give them something that gives them a hope. Amen. I know my thoughts toward you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expecting it or a hope in a future. Jeremiah 33, 3. Hallelujah. Amen. To give them, to give them a hope in a future. Humanity needs a hope. And when we, listen, everything's done is to, is, to, is to make Jesus into something he's not. R remove his deity. Remove who he is. Take, take away from him who he really is so that mankind has nothing to believe in. To turn the Word of God into something it's not. Or actually do away with the Word of God. And here Peter and John, in just one moment of time, went from a hopeless, oh, Jesus will do that for you. I said, Jesus will do that for you. Jesus can take the hopeless situations of life. Jesus can take the darkest hour. Jesus can take that where there is no hope, where there is no answer, where there is no vision, and he can show up on the scene, glory to God, and in one moment's time there can be a restoration of hope, of vision, of a dream, glory to God. It says that Peter and John in that moment believed. They walked in and saw one cocoon and one napkin, and instantly hope was rekindled. Vision was restored. Faith rose up, praise God. And I want you to know that the Most High God can show up into your life into the scenes that you're dealing with, into the things that you're dealing with, where you look and there is no hope, where you look and there is no answer, where you look and you can't figure it out. How many of you have ever been in a place where you just couldn't figure out what to do? I mean, no matter what you did, no matter how you finagled, no matter how you ciphered, for all you Jethro's out there, <laughs> God do my ciphering. Hallelujah. There was just no way to figure out an answer. It was, it looked like that the hope had been sucked out of the room like you vacuumed it out with a Kirby. And they said, now for you, you other salesmen, for like a um, rainbow. Like an Electrolux. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you ever had people walk into a room and they walk into the room and they, so, they single-handedly suck all the life out of it? Oh, yeah. You ever been around those kind of people? Yeah. I mean, they single-handedly suck all the life out of, out of everything. Well, that's what the devil does. 
And that's what circumstances can do. And that's what situations can do. But I want you to know today that, that you may show up and look in. And listen, listen, can you imagine this? Peter and John show up and see an empty, empty cocoon and everything is gets, every, all their hope, all their faith, all their every vision gets restored. Somebody else can walk in there and see it as they robbed him. <laughs> He's gone. Don't know what we're going to do. He won't ever there in the first place. They can be Eeyores. Mm -hmm. No matter. Nice cocoon. <laughs> I guess we'll just go through life singing the Hee Haw song. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair, and agony on me. Boy, what a faith song. <laughs> but I'm telling you, the heart of mankind today cries out. Where is the hope? Where are all the answers? Where is the God of my fathers? Where is the God of miracles? And I want you to know, hallelujah, praise God, that Jesus was raised up. Hallelujah. Verse 19, then the same day of the evening when the first day of the week, the doors were being shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst. I'm telling you, Jesus could stand in the midst of your problems. Amen. Jesus could stand in the midst of your darkness. Hallelujah. And bring light to a hopeless situation. Jesus can walk into your room where you've got it shut up and the window shades pulled and everything so nobody can see in because you're afraid of what's going on around you. And Jesus, the master, hallelujah, the resurrected one, can enter that room and the light of heaven shine, praise God, and dispel all the darkness and all the fear and all the degradation <coughs> and bring his life and light to your circumstance. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And he said, peace. Oh, thank God. Thank, I'm telling you, why peace? Because when your mind's running a thousand miles a second, when your mind is trying to figure everything out, when your mind is going, my God, what am I going to do next? What am I going to do after that? Oh, what am I going to do? This is too big. That's too big. It's, I can't do this. I can't handle that. I can't juggle this over here. And I can't juggle this over there. And I'm just, I'm in you know, peace. Not as the world gives, but as I give unto you. Peace. And be still. Step back away from it all. And rest in the presence of his glory and allow him who will make a way where there is not a way amen. do what he does. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Oh, glory to God. I said get into, he said, first thing he says, he didn't say, boneheads, get in faith. He said, peace. Be still. Let the calmness of the presence of God overtake you. Settle you. Why? Because you can't get into faith if you're worrying. You can't get into faith if you're anxious. And so Jesus walked in the midst of this place of a bunch of hopeless disciples. I'm sure Peter and John told him what happened. You know, uh, even you got, you got Thomas. I mean, you're always going to have a Thomas running around in your group. Unless I see it, I won't believe it. Even after Jesus appeared to all of them at Thomas, they, he shows up and they, they go, uh, Hey, we saw the Lord. Unless I see him and reach forth my finger and stick it to the palm of his hand and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. A few days later, Jesus shows up again, walks over to Thomas and says, Thomas! <laughs> stick the finger in, stick the hand in, be not faithless but believing. He falls down and goes, My Lord and my God! How many of you have ever heard a sermon on my Lord and my God? It was not a compliment, and it was not, a it was not an example where to follow. Say it out. Jesus said, Thomas, because you saw me, you believed. But blessed is the man who hath not seen, yet believed. Yeah. Sometimes I think we do people injustice. Jesus appeared to me and gave me all my answers. 
And you hear these tests. Oh, Jesus showed up to me. He told me everything I needed to know. You know, you go read Brother Hagin's book, I Believe in Visions. The Lord would give him some instruction about ministry. but didn't give him all instructions and didn't give him all answers. He had a vision of Jesus. His sister had just died. He was praying about why she had died. And she turned around, looked at him in the vision and said, Oh, Kenneth, there are reasons I died. Don't worry about it. Turn around and never told him what it were. He never did find out what they were. Hey man, if you're, if you're talking to the Lord and you're in a vision, you ought to get all the answers. Not because then you be led by visions and not the Word, not by faith, by the Holy Ghost. God wants you to be led by the Spirit. Be not faithless, Thomas, but believing. Blessed is the man who hath not seen and yet believed. But Jesus appears to them. Man, I'm going to tell you, this, something was ignited in them. He's raised from the dead. And I want you to know Jesus can walk into your circumstances and there can be a resurrection, a vision of your hope, of your faith, of, of the dreams you have, glory to God, by the visitation of the, of the knowledge of the resurrection of the Lord. And I'll tell you, sometimes I think we get so caught up with the circumstances, we just kind of forget that Jesus is out there. Peace, peace. Peace, be still. The Word of God says, in patience, possess ye your souls. Why does your soul need to be possessed? And I don't mean possessed by devils either. It needs to be possessed in the peace of God. It needs to be settled. Why? Because James says this. Look over here in James chapter 1. I'm not doing a typical Resurrection Sunday sermon, but we're doing an Ed Taylor version. Yeah. Glory to God. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Now, that doesn't mean, listen, listen, that doesn't mean Glory to God, I'm dead. I'm dying of cancer. I'm going back. No, no, no. When you fall into diverse temptations, you count it all joy. In other words, you, you begin to rejoice doing this. Your God is your answer and your way out. Yeah. Knowing this, to the trying of your faith worketh patience, but when let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I do not believe you can be in patience without the peace of God. You have to be settled with his peace yeah. in order to stand in patience. Yeah, that's good. And I just love the fact that Jesus walked into the middle of that room. Can you imagine all the emotion, all the raw emotion? You've, you've, you've been to funerals. You've been around families who've lost a loved one. Amen? And, and it's, it's a difficult time. There's, 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 the, there's the, the, the swing of emotions goes from laughter one minute to, to deep sorrow the next. People walk in and, and, and they're full of sorrow after somebody else has gotten over that. Maybe they, they, they finally got, kind of got over some stuff and somebody else walks in and they're full of sorrow and the whole room gets filled with sorrow again. And then you go around and talk 20, 30 minutes and they about laugh about funny things that the person did or, or the, you know, and there's laughter. And, then, and it's just back and forth and back and forth. It's a difficult time for people. It's just, it, grief is a difficult thing. Losing a loved one is a difficult, we all know that. So can you imagine here they lost not only their, the, 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 the master and the Messiah, the one they love, they lost what they thought was their only hope in life. Can you imagine the swing of emotion and then here come Peter and John. We, he, he, he ain't there. Mary comes back. I saw him. Shut up, woman. <laughs> it's not permitted for women to speak. I mean, I'm, I, you know, something, you know. I don't believe you. Then he shows up to all of them except Thomas. And they all go, woo, praise God. We saw Lord Thomas. Shows up. I don't believe it. He's still in grief. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, there's no peace in grief. It's tormenting. I said it's tormenting. There's a torment in grief that torments your soul and pulls at your heart and rips at your heart. And I can't, I can't, I can't even fathom the depth of anguish that they were all in yeah. during this time. Hmm. They'd sold out everything to follow him. 
Their commitment, everything about their life was to Jesus. So whatever you're facing today, maybe you feel like you've sold out everything to be there. Maybe everything in your life seems like it's in upheaval and turned upside down and inside of a washing machine being agitated back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But Jesus appears and says, peace be still. Oh, peace. Peace. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Where? In your soul. Because that's where all the emotions are going on. And I'm telling you, you may be facing things right this very moment. You came into church this morning and you were wearing it like Pigpen from the Peanuts gang carries his dust cloud. <clears throat> How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. If you had kids, you remember Pigpen and the little dust cloud that went with him everywhere he went. And you may have come here today with the weight and the burden of a hopeless situation in life. And I say to you by the authority of the Holy Ghost, peace, be still. Be at peace in your soul. Because the one who has the answers is here. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Peace. And what's the other song? Peace, peace, wonderful peace coming down from the Father above. I can't remember how it goes from there. I just, see, we don't sing, some, we don't sing enough of those songs. Yeah. Peace from the Father. Why? Because he has to restore hope. And he can't restore hope while you're in anguish and in turmoil. And he says peace to you so that in that place he can say things like he said. Do you remember when Lazarus had died? Over in the, uh, oh, was that 19th chapter of John? Where is that? 20th chapter of John. No, 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 no. Lazarus died earlier than that. 11th chapter of John, 25th to 26th verse. They loved their brother. Mary and Martha loved their brother. Oh, how they loved their brother. Jesus deliberately waited to the fourth day. Why? Because the Jews believed the Spirit left the body at the third day. So they believed that as long as your body was still, your Spirit was still there, you could get raised up. It wasn't a big deal because you were really just kind of semi-dead. How many of you ever seen The Princess Bride? Mostly dead. Mostly dead doesn't mean completely dead. <laughs> He's just mostly dead. Hopperdink, hopperdink, hopperdink. <laughs> Nathan, don't even get going. I used to think that was a dumb. I actually got, I've got the dick. I like the movie. Now, I used to think it was the dumbest movie ever put to film. And somehow or another, I got, you know, converted. I'm not sure how that happened. <laughs> Verse 21. In verse 20, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Mary's just overcome with grief. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Lord, if you had just moved quicker, this wouldn't be this, as bad as it is. Lord, if you had just showed up and done something yesterday, I wouldn't be in this situation. God's bigger than death. He's bigger than what you're facing. I said, if God is bigger than death, he's bigger than what you're facing. Verse 
But I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, he will give it to thee. And Jesus said, thy brother shall rise again. And Mary said, I know you shall rise in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. And I want you to have that. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're facing, it may look like, you know, everything, whatever dreams, vision, hopes, whatever you had are dead, but Jesus is the resurrection. I'm the answer. And it may be, I mean, he may be dead and his spirit out of his body, but that's not too big for me. I am the resurrection. I am. Can you imagine what words of comfort and hope this had to have been at a time when his brother is dead and she says, I know he'll rise in the last resurrection. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Lord, if you just got here a little bit earlier, if you just got me some more money a couple of days ago, Lord, if you would just intervene quicker, I mean, I wouldn't be in the mess I'm in. Oh, but Jesus says, I'm the resurrection. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. It may all look lost. It may all look buried. It may all look dead. But I'm telling you, uh, glory be to God. There is one who can walk into the room, who can walk into the situation and say, peace be still. Why? Because I am the resurrection. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the light. <clears throat> he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. The dreams you had, if you believe in me, they may be dead, but they'll live again. The hopes that you had, though they were dead, if you believe in me, they'll live again. I'm telling you, he is resurrection life. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And she says, Yea, Lord, I believe thou art the Son of God, which should come into the world. And then he goes and raises Lazarus from the dead. Hallelujah. He actually says, Lazarus, come forth. Why? Because if he had just said come forth, everybody would have come up. Everybody that was there in, the in some kind of grave would have come up. If he ran down here to Sed if like him going down here to Sedgefield and, and, and the guy stopped because it says Lazarus. And he walked up to it and instead of saying Lazarus come forth, he just says come forth. All the graves would have busted up and everybody would have come up. He said, Lazarus, come forth. I'm telling you, God's got a word for you. I said, God's got a word for you specifically to your circumstance and your situation. And it's full of the resurrection life of God. His peace be still. See, what's he, what's, what's he doing when he says, I am the resurrection? Get your eyes off the sepulcher. Get your eyes off the fact that Lazarus is in there and get them on me. Not, not Pastor Ed, but on Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is saying, get your eyes off all this stuff. You might have bills stacked up to here and money stacked down to here. Ever been there? Jesus said, get your eyes off of that. Be at peace. I'm the resurrection. I said, I'm the resurrection. And I'm going to walk into your circumstance. And if you'll be at peace and get your eyes off the circumstance and get it back on me, my life. Or we can say it this way, uh, Paul wrote to the church at Rome and says, For the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Romans 8. Now, is that Romans 8 too? Romans 8, 1 is there is therefore not a condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus has set me free from the laws of sin and death, or made me free. There's a law at work. When you're at peace in the presence of God, and you realize that He is the resurrection. Now, Jesus, no, Jesus didn't say, I'm the resurrection. The one He said, I am the resurrection. Think about that now. His life is resurrection life. Whatever it touches, it resurrects. Do 
your human spirits get resurrected into the life of God by coming in contact with his resurrection life. Human bodies get healed and made whole by coming in contact with the resurrection life. Finances get restored by coming in contact with the resurrection life. Romans 8, 2 says it's a law of the Spirit. It's called the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. What are you doing when you're not at peace and when you're worrying and you're looking at your operating in the law of sin and death? And you're just going to keep getting the same old junk. That's got dark, didn't it? Let there be light. <laughs> Think about it. Jesus didn't walk in and say, bless your heart. So we think it's compassion to walk into a group of people who are hurting. And go, oh, bless your heart. Oh, darling, I'm just so sorry. It's so bad. It's just rough. I know. I'm just going to sit down and, and, and gloom out with you. Jesus said, peace be still. Peace. Calmness. You've got to know, a calmness overtook that room. And a peace overtook that room. Emotions were calmed. And he presented the resurrection life in front of them. Here today, you're facing things. And you're going through stuff. And you pull up to the gas pump. And I'm telling you, those days it's hard for me to. I, will, I pull up my credit card. And, and, and 10 years ago, you, you pull up and you put 20 gallons in and you pay $19.80. Day you pull up and put 20 gallons in, and it's $75. Mm. And it's all manipulated speculation. People manipulating the markets. It has nothing to do with need or world supply or demand. It's all driven by forces on, who are determined to destroy world economies. And you just hard, you know, you, just, you, got, you, got, you got to get a hold of your mind. <clears throat> Especially when you pull, when you got three cars at the house. And Jenny goes, I'm empty. Nathan goes, I'm empty. And you look at yours and you're empty. And you got to go fill three of them up. $210 later. I'm telling you, you can, you can get, you know. And when the girls are home, five of them running around. I'm empty. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Moped. Yeah. Me. 80 miles to the gallon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get you a wet suit and a helmet. Nee. Better yet, bicycle. <laughs> Everywhere for free. <laughs> now nah, I'm messing now. Sure. We're all facing things. We're all facing circumstances. We're all facing situations. Every one of us have a different situation you face. Different things going on in each house. Different things going on at work. Different things going on in your bodies. But I want you to know Jesus says, peace be still. And then he says this to you. I am the resurrection and the life. He's life to your body. He's life to your finances. He's life to your marriage. He's life to family situations. He is the life. Father, in Jesus' name, your life is ministered to this congregation this wonderful day. Peace be still, we speak over them. Tranquility out of the realm of the spirits, we speak over their lives. We thank you that we stand in the midst of their problems and look at them and say, I am the resurrection and the life. You are the answer. You are the answer to whatever they're facing. And if they will once again take up their hope and step into faith, you will, your life will be released into those circumstances and those situations. And just as John G. Lake, Lake said when touching the bubonic plague and it died, that gentleman is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, overcoming the law of sin and death. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. 
coming down from the Father above. Flow over my spirit. Hallelujah. If we could find those words, that would be great anyway. Every head by eye closed. If you're here this morning, Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life. We want you to have an opportunity today to come know the wonderful resurrection, the one who is the resurrection. Because you can't experience anything I talked about today until you come to know him first. 